Hey everybody, Melissa here. So today I'm going to show you how to create pivot tables when your data is stored in multiple workbooks in Microsoft Excel. And then we're going to take it a step further and I'm going to show you how to create those pivot tables when you have data in multiple worksheets within those workbooks. And we're going to do all of this using Power Query. I can't wait to show you how this works. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we have a workbook called Sales Data Combined. And what we're trying to do is take these eight workbooks that contain sales data, get the information back into one workbook, and then be able to create pivot tables. And how we're going to do that is by using Power Query. So now we need to get our data ready for Power Query and our pivot table. And one of the things we need to do is make sure that our data in every single one of our workbooks is in a table. So how we're going to do that is select any cell within your data, hit Control T, tell it that your table has headers, and tell it OK. And that's going to create our table. Now one of the other things that we need to do is if you see your table name up here, this table name needs to be the same for every single workbook that you have within the folder that you're trying to combine. Now because we have one worksheet, Excel is going to default this to table one, and that's fine. I would just let it. I wouldn't rename it or anything like that, but we just need to make sure that all of our table names are the same. So I'm going to go ahead and save it, and let's go do another one. Here we have our data for Australia, so we're going to do the same thing. Select a cell, Control T, we have headers, tell it OK. And now we have our table, and it has the same name. And now we want to do the same thing for all of our workbooks within our folder. And now we're ready to head on into Power Query and pull all of the data from the workbooks within that folder and put it into our Sales Data Combined Workbook. Now to get to Power Query, we're going to go to Data, Get Data, and Launch Power Query Editor. And as you can see, it comes up, but it's blank because we haven't done any queries yet. Now to create a new query, we're going to go to New Source, File, folder and we're going to navigate to where all of our workbooks are housed. And once we've selected the folder, we're going to tell it to open. Now this list here of the names, Asia, Australia, Europe, and Germany, it matches what is in my folder where I want it to pull the data. So this is everything. And now what we're going to do is we're going to click Combine and Transform. Now if you notice over here on the left, this is our combined files area. We have table one. Now, if you remember, we said we were going to name all of our tables the same thing and let Excel handle it at this point. And it named them all table one, so we can select it. And this is a sample of what it's going to look like. This shows just Asia, but it's going to pull all of the other ones as well. So we can go ahead and tell it OK. And as you can see, here is Asia, here is Australia, and then we have all of our fields across the top, which is our invoice number, customer ID, customer name, and so on. Now we do have the ability to change the type of field that these are. For example, on the very end here, we can change this to a currency, but if it's not set that way in your spreadsheet, it's just going to change it back. So I don't tend to do anything in here unless there's a field that I don't want then we can right click on it and we can tell it to remove. But with this right now, I'm going to tell it it's OK. So we're going to go to close and load. And look at this. This is all of our data from all of our worksheets that were in that folder. And if you notice at the bottom, even though we had a worksheet in here called sales data, it created a new one with everything combined. And now we can do some formatting in here if we want to, like say I want to take the amount and I want to make it a dollar amount before I create my pivot table. If I just select it and I do control shift dollar sign, then it's going to make all of these currency. And now we're ready to create our pivot table. Now we want to select any cell within our table and we can go to insert pivot table from table range and it's going to select everything. And I always tell it new worksheet because I'm easily confused. And if I put it in the same one, that doesn't work for me. But you can either do it in a new worksheet or the existing one and tell it OK. 
And now just like a regular pivot table, we have all of our information here. Let's just say the data I'm looking for is the quantity and the amount of items sold. So I'm going to take quantity and I'm going to pull it to values. I'm going to take amount and I'm going to do the same thing. And if you notice, our columns turns into values because these are showing in columns. And let's just say for our rows, I want it to break it down by location. So I'm going to pull this down to rows. And now if you look, we have our locations, the quantity, and the dollar amount for what they've sold. Now one of the best things about using Power Query to pull all of the data from all of those worksheets into a combined sheet is let's just say that you have different people working in these different locations making changes to these spreadsheets. And let's say they make a change to where the quantity is 222 and the dollar amount is 1900 and they save it. Now when we go back to our pivot table, if you notice, it says the sum of quantity right now is 3431 for Asia and 17480. If we do a refresh, nothing happens. But if we go over to our combined spreadsheet and we changed this one here and it says 222 and 1900, which is what we changed it to, and we refresh from here, go back to our sheet one in our pivot table and tell it to refresh. And now we've got 3432 and 17580. So those changes are made automatically, no matter who's making changes to your original spreadsheets within your folder. Now we're going to look at something a little bit different. So we still have our folder that contains our eight spreadsheets that we need to pull data from. The only difference is this workbook has multiple worksheets we need to pull data from into separate pivot tables. So we'll need to pull sales data and have a pivot table for it. And we'll need to pull inventory and have a pivot table for it. So the first thing we need to do is the same as the other. All of our data needs to be in a table. So select anywhere in your table and control T, hit enter, and now we have our table. So if you notice up here, it named this table one, and that is fine if that's how you want to keep it. But with this saying sales data and inventory, and as these get further along, I'm not going to remember what's in table one, two, three, four, and so on. And I'm going to be hopping back and forth between my spreadsheet to kind of trigger my memory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name my table to match whatever data it holds. So instead of table one, I'm going to name this sales data. So when you go to name your table, you cannot have any spaces, special characters or anything like that. So I'm going to name this sales data with no spaces. And we're going to do the same thing for inventory. Let's go ahead and make our table. And then instead of table two, I'm going to name it inventory. So one thing you have to be careful with this process is on all eight of your spreadsheets, all of your tables have to be named exactly the same. If you have a typographical error, it can cause some issues in your query and cause it to be off or cause your pivot tables to be off. So you can copy and paste those or you can use your cloud clipboard to kind of keep track of what you're naming them and paste from there. If you've not accessed your cloud clipboard really quickly, if you do your Windows key and a V, this is your cloud clipboard and it keeps track of everything that you have copied. If there's something you're working on, like naming these worksheets, you can actually pin them to the top and they'll be the first things that you see. Okay, so now that we've done this for Asia, let's do another one and look at Australia. So let's go ahead and create our table. And then instead of table one, we're gonna name it sales data. Do the same thing for inventory. And then we're going to do the same thing for all the others in this folder. Now that that's done, we're ready to start bringing in our data. Now I'm in a workbook called Inventory Combined, and I'm going to pull in our inventory data. So the process is basically going to be the same. We're going to go to Data, Get Data, Launch Power Query Editor. We don't have any queries, so we're going to go to New Source, File, and we're going to open the location of our workbooks and we're going to tell it to open. This is all of our information that we need from our workbooks combine. And now we have our four parameters. So inventory and sales data is our worksheets. We're looking for our tables, which is sales data with no space and inventory one. 
So since we're working with inventory, I'm going to select it. Now, if you see these skip files with errors, I do not check this because if you skip your files with errors, it's not going to tell you there's a problem and your data could be skewed. I want it to kick out and tell me, hey, there's something wrong. You need to look at this file because if you misname or have a typographical error in the name of your table and you do skip files, it's going to skip right over that and you don't want that to happen. So now let's tell it OK. And this is all of our data. So now we're going to tell it to close and load. And here is all of our inventory data. Now this says sales data, multiple worksheets. Do not rename these tabs because this is telling it where it's located. And if I was to rename this to inventory and try to make changes or anything, it's going to throw an error. So don't rename these. And now we're ready to create our pivot table. So somewhere in your table, go to insert, pivot table, table range. It's selected everything, new worksheet, OK. And now let's just say for my values, I want my inventory and I want my item code and I want my location in my rows. Now this looks kind of funny to me. So I'm going to reverse these two and put my location and then it's going to tell me my location and all of the inventory that they have. So if you notice for product 890, there's 115 in inventory. Let's say somebody makes changes to the inventory file for Asia in our main workbook. Let's make this 120 and let's save it. And once it's saved, make sure you close it out. And now if we go back to our inventory combined and we do refresh all, which is under data, it shows now 120. If we go back to our pivot table and we do refresh all, it now shows 120 and that inventory for Asia has been adjusted. Now let's go and get our sales data that was in the other worksheet in that workbook. So the process is the same. Data, get data, launch Power Query Editor. We do not have any queries. New source, file, go to the file destination, tell it to open. This is all of our spreadsheets. Combine and transform. And instead of inventory one, we want to get our sales data table. And again, do not skip the files with errors. Tell it OK. And this is all of our data. So let's go ahead and do close and load. And here's our data. And now we're ready to do our pivot table. So select a field, insert pivot table from table range, selects it, tell it OK. And now we can pull our information. We want quantity and amount and values and location in our rows. And now we have our data. And just like the other one, if someone were to make a change on the sales data tab, this says 221. Let's make it 222 and make it 1900. Save it. Make sure it's closed. And then we go back to our data worksheet. Go to data, refresh all. It shows 222 and 1900. Go back to our pivot table, data, refresh all. It's now showing 3432 and $17,580. And that's it for today. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this in the future, be sure to click that subscribe button before you leave. And don't forget to hop on out to my website, melcompton.com, for written instructions for this tutorial and so much more. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.